funeral service, mm -hmm. and there's a scripture as part of the service. It's uh, John chapter 5. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, we're going to look at John chapter 5, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, mm -hmm. and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, yeah. and they that hear shall live. And as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life within himself. Yeah. And hath given to him the authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Right. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his, his voice. Those that have done, uh, they shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So what I want to talk about this evening is um, how people conceive of Christ, mm -hmm. who Jesus Christ is. And uh, I remember, uh, this is, of course, this is the Gospel of John, and uh, a few years ago they had a, uh, uh, they had a, a film. It's kind of amazing what they did with this movie. And it was narrated by Christopher Plummer. Mm -hmm. That's the Canadian actor who was... Uh, played the, the officer in uh, The Sound of Music, among, among many other roles. He had a very long story career in Hollywood. So uh, that was a very interesting film. You know, I was thinking it's like, uh, it's like well, the, the Bible's not written as a, as a movie. It's kind of, a, I think you have to make adjustments. Uh, you know, it's a different uh, genre, film versus the written text, the sacred text. Of course, since they invented... Uh, movies or the, the camera and uh, motion picture cameras uh, they've been telling the story of the Bible in, in film and there's a lot of great material in the Bible uh, for for film uh, but I, I, I thought it was overall a very well done film there's a few things I would have done differently I think you need to maximize I mean the narrator's got a lot to read so any opportunity for the, the actors to, to be speaking you should let them do it um, but uh, they had the, the actor who played, uh, who played Jesus Christ. Later on, he was on that show Lost. I think he got some controversy after that. But uh, he's playing, he's playing uh, Jesus Christ in this film. And, you know, he's like going to the text of John, and he says, you know, it's like uh, people can see of Jesus uh, a lot of different ways, but here in, in the Gospel of John, he says a lot of times Jesus is like telling people off, right? So we're gonna look at the confrontational Christ. I was, I was looking at this book by, uh, I think it's Marcus Borg, he's a left, leftist uh, Bible scholar. And uh, he's, he wrote, I think it's his first Life of Jesus book, and it had some good insights. And I don't, of course, I don't agree with everything he says as a liberal, but I think he has some important inso insights here and there. And uh, he was talking, I think it was him, talking about how people conceive of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus, you know? And uh, some people look at Jesus as a hippie. And uh, you know, a lot of people try to sell different books. I remember it just came up recently, uh, you know, the Da Vinci Code thing, which is, which is ridiculous. I was talking to a friend about, about the Da Vinci Code. And, and the, it's just, it's, it's so absurd. But people don't know the Bible. People don't know church history. So when yeah. someone comes up with these ridiculous and sensational claims, you know, uh, a lot of people are taken in by it. And pastors weren't prepared, honestly. Because a lot of pastors don't know church history. And it's a yeah. problem with Protestantism because uh, we like to think that, you know, church history begins with Martin Luther nailing the 95 theses on the, uh, uh, the, the castle church door. But, of yeah. course, I mean, you need to know the whole breadth of, of church history. Yes, uh, I think it's important with, with the Catholic and the Orthodox, even the uh, Aramaic, the Syriac tradition, the, the Coptic. and. Ethiopian tradition. We need to understand basic knowledge of it so that people can't take advantage of people's ignorance. Um, so, I mean, that very idea is like, well, Jesus, right? <laughs> you know, this is crazy. Mary Magdalene's his mistress, and he runs off to France, and he sires the the, the Merovingian dynasty. I was like, my friend, it's like, you know, the Merovingians were they, they were Germanic warlords. You know, part of these these Germanic hordes that invaded barbarian hordes. And the Merovingians, uh, when the when the barbarians started coming into invading the Roman Empire, uh, a lot of them converted to Christianity actually, but they weren't Orthodox Christians. They weren't Catholics. They were they were heretical. No, they're heretical. They belonged to heretical churches like the Arians, where they denied the, the Holy Trinity. 
So uh, Clovis the Merovingian was the first Frankish, you know, Germanic warlord to convert to not to a deviant, you know, non-orthodox or heretical form of Christianity, uh, but to Roman Catholicism. So that's a that's what that dynasty is about. I mean, it's just grasping, you know, just to think that these are they're not Middle Eastern. They're, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. It's just absurd. Um, but you know, you get these false Jesuses out there, right? And I think Marcus Borges making jokes about it, or people saying Jesus was gay or a gay, oh, God. yeah, I know, a gay magician. No. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But what is the who's the who does the Bible say Jesus is? Uh, he's a rabbi. He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. Of course, he's holy. Uh, but sometimes I think that we we have incorrect ideas of who Jesus is, yeah. and. Part of the reason, well, like what's going on in our society today, if you look at it with, with, with politics, for instance, um, like, uh, you know, they're going after the Republicans and President yeah. Trump very aggressively. And uh, just today or yesterday, they, I think it was yesterday, they, uh, uh, they gave a sweetheart deal to, to Hunter Biden, who seems to have committed many egregious crimes. Yeah. And if you weren't a Biden or if you weren't part of the Washington insiders, uh, he would be he would spend at least a year or two at the very least in prison. Yeah. But you know, Trump they're gonna they're gonna oh you got your this is your they're gonna throw him in, in, in jail for a hundred years if they can for paperwork, not processing paperwork correctly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wow. That's absurd. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And yet this man, uh, I mean with the Hunter Biden laptop, yeah. it's just very serious crimes bribery, corruption, influence peddling, uh, and yet they're going to let him get away with it, looks like. Yeah. So, how does this happen? Because, you know, the, the, the people who have Christian values, they want to play nice, right? Right. Oh, let's just be nice. And and uh, I saw this this painting uh, a few years ago. It's like the laughing Jesus. you know. And it's like, uh, I'm sure Jesus, Jesus seemed to have, a, you know, he used a lot of hyperbole in his, uh, uh, in his parables. Some of them could be seen as they're amusing stories, right? The parables are, at the very least. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that Jesus probably was somebody who could laugh and have a sense of humor. But the Bible doesn't describe Jesus as laughing. It describes him as crying, though. And uh, in our day and age, we have a lot to be crying about. But I, I, I want to mention something else about that. The the world, the world, they want us, they want us to be depressed and sad, and we cannot allow these people to take our joy away from us. We're not going to allow them to do that. Uh, and, you know, uh, they can mock, they can scorn all they want. We are going to walk in the joy of the Lord and we're going to have confidence in the truth. But there's a problem. Problem. I'll, I'll give you another example. It's like uh, how to deal with radical Islam. Yeah. Uh, in, for instance, Speaker's Corner. Uh, you know, that's what it used to be called. Now it's like it's overrun by, it's like Jihadist Corner now. Yeah. But how do you share the gospel with the Muslims? And oh well, we just we need to. What, what certain Christians are saying is don't offend them, don't contradict them. Um, you know, just appease them and, and befriend them, and, and don't challenge their beliefs. Affirm them and their beliefs. But in the speaker's corner, these 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 Muslim apologists, they're they're very aggressive. They mock and ridicule the Trinity. They mock the the, the, the Jesus that Jesus the Son of God. They ridicule the Bible and mock the scriptures, and uh, people want to be nice, so nobody's uh, you know nobody's going up there and defending the truth of the scripture because we're going to be super nice to these people. Yeah. Finally, Jay uh, Jay Smith and David Wood and Hatun Tosh. Once we they started turning the tables on them, it's like okay, you're gonna you're gonna mock and ridicule the Bible. Let's look at your Qurans. Look at look at your Hadith. How can you defend some of the things that are written in here? You're mocking us for what we believe, you know, and, and uh, challenging. Paul says that uh, to the to the, the I should have the scripture in front of me to the to the the, the Jews is a stumbling block, the yeah. scandal of the cross. Yeah. The the Greek philosophers mock, yeah. they laugh, they right. think it's absurd and ridiculous. The Jewish people are offended by it, but to those who believe, right. To those who believe is the power of God unto salvation. Even to this day, you know, it's like anything goes except for the gospel, right? All these leftist groups, they don't care what religion you are, 
fulfill, you know, as long as you don't believe in Jesus yeah. Christ as the Son right. of God that he died on the cross. There's a reason for that, right? Yeah. right? Because as he says in the scriptures, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of times why we conceive of Jesus is shaped, it's not by the Bible, unfortunately, but it's our, our culture. I saw this picture of, a, it's like an orthodox icon of Jesus. He looks so stern, he looks angry, and he's gonna looks like he's going to whack you up the side of the head. Right? But what is the nature of God? God is love, right? For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son as a gift so that we can be saved. But when it comes to evildoers, to wicked, wicked people, I mean, Jesus did not... Uh, appease them. He did not condone wickedness and sin. Right. He called people to repentance. Right. John the Baptist started, you know, just reading the Gospel of Mark, John the Baptist began his ministry by preaching repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. John is jailed. Jesus right. then begins his own ministry with the message repent right. for the kingdom of God is at hand. One of the problems we have in society today, especially during the month of June, we have pride, <laughs> is they don't believe in right or wrong, good or evil. They call it evil good and good evil. There's no moral standards anymore. It's chaos. Like someone said before, if I'm okay and you're okay, explain this. Yeah. Cross. Right. Right? right? If everything's hunky-dory, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? Why right. sin? That's right. Well, they're saying sins aren't sin. Sometimes, you know, like I said, the Bible says, wages sin is death, but give to God's eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. But sometimes people don't see the gravity, the, the seriousness of their sins. Yes, sir. And uh, sometimes people judge others. Yes, sir, they do. And yet they don't see that judgmental condemnation attitude could be sinful or worse than what those people are doing. We all need to repent. We all need to yes. we need to understand that we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. And we need to repent of our sins yes. and endeavor to live godly lives. Yes. One of the important aspects of, of this here in the scriptures is the idea of Jesus being the son of the son of man. Yes, sir. The son of man. What does that mean? You know, sometimes people erroneously would say, right, son of God refer, refers to his divinity and son of man refers to his humanity. Yes. That's not really true. Of course, he is fully God and fully demand, uh, man. Uh, but if you look in, I think it's chapter 7 of the book of uh, Daniel, where we have the appearance of the, this cosmic Messiah, some messianic figure called the Son of Man, descending from the clouds of heaven. And what is he going to do? To him, him is endowed the power to judge. First the beasts come, and then uh, one after another. This represents the Antichrist world system, the imperial, the empires of man, cruel empires. Then he says, I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man, unlike the other creatures, he's not a beast or a monstrosity, he's a human being. He came with the, the clouds of heaven, he's from above, and he came before the Ancient of Days, Yahweh, the Father, and he was brought near before them. There was given to him, him dominion and, and glory and kingdom that all peoples, uh, uh, people, na nations, and languages should serve him, and his dominion is an everlasting dominion, uh, which shall not pass away, and this is a kingdom that shall not be destroyed, the, the eternal and everlasting kingdom of God. As we see here in the scripture, in the Gospel of John, yeah. that one of the roles of the Son of Man, yeah. he rules, right? Yeah, right, right? He also dispenses judgment and he dispenses justice. Yeah. So, of course, there's this one of my favorite parables or prophecies uh, is chapter 25 yeah. of the Gospel, sorry, the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, this is the sheep and the goats. And it says, uh, this is uh, chapter 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in all of his glory and the holy angels with him, then he shall, seat upon, he shall sit upon his throne of glory. And before him shall be all uh, gathered all nations. He shall separate them one for another, as a, a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Sheep go on his right hand, the so goats on his left. And he yeah. rewards the righteous and punishes the wicked. Yeah. So we see here in other scriptures the role of the Son of Man. Yeah to judge. That's what it says here in, in the Gospel of John as yeah. well. Yeah. So this is this is who Jesus Christ is. Of course, Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged, but he has the authority to judge, yeah. right? Yeah. Because he's, uh, that's what he he took the judgment of our sin upon himself by dying on the cross. 
So, uh, like I said, people just have this mis mistaken conception of who Jesus Christ was. I, I, I was talking to another a, a friend of mine recently, uh, and we're talking about um, this movie uh, about the life of Christ called yeah. King of Kings. Jeffrey yeah. Hunter, who played the, the captain of yeah. the uh, Enterprise before Kirk, yeah. the, the pilot episode. So before he did the, the captain, before he did Star Trek, he did uh, King of Kings. Now, there's a lot of things I like about the movie, <laughs> but they left out the cleansing of the temple. <laughs> There's no cleansing the temple in that movie. And I think that that's a very seminal event in the life of Jesus. He's yeah. going in the temple and he's whipping the money changers. <laughs> he made a whip, yeah, yeah, kicking over the all table, right. throwing all the animals. He's right. executing judgment. This is my father's house. Get these things out of here. Right, right. Uh, because, like I said, they want to they portray Jesus. People want to think of Jesus as just super nice. And, and, uh, but, and Jesus was nice. He's yeah. good. He's yeah. kind. He's holy. But people think that if you say what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong, and you hold people to account, well, that's not very loving, that's not very kind, that's not very Christ-like. Well, you don't understand who Christ is. It is Christ-like when you have evil people exploiting and oppressing others. Yeah. It's your obligation to speak out and speak the truth. Yeah. What good are we yeah. if we don't do that? Part of the role of the church is to be the prophetic voice of God to the world. Yeah. And... Uh, I've talked about this many times before. Here you have a Catholic layman, yeah. Matt Walsh, and he wrote a book called The Church of Cowards. Yeah. Because we're not right. preaching That's the Word of God right. and God's moral authority the way we should. Yeah. People don't want to talk about abortion, the taking yeah. of an innocent human life. Yeah. And we're obligated to do that. Yeah. As I was mentioning, well, what about politics? Well. Jesus looked at, uh, well, he didn't look at, well, he did look at, at uh, Herod Antipas later, but earlier in his ministry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Herod, Herod Antipas, he's looking for you. He's going to capture you. Yeah, Jesus says, he, go and tell that fox yeah, that yeah. I'm going to continue on my ministry for the present time. So he's exposing the wickedness. Yeah, the wickedness. Yeah. And, and John the Baptist did the same thing with, with Herod Antipas. The wickedness of this evil political ruler. John did it, Jesus did it, and uh, we need to do it. Yeah. So Matt Walsh has been talking about uh, what they call you know, gender-affirming care, gender mutilation of children happening in the United States. It's appalling. It's the, the, the level of moral confusion yeah. we have in this country is just uh, it's, it's breathtaking. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't believe it when we see yeah. how wicked things are. So you have a, a it was a Vivek Ramaswamy. He was on the, uh, yeah. I think Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. Right. And of course, they're, they're so partisan. It's yeah. not. This isn't really you know CNN, MSNBC, the, the network news. These are not. This is not news. This is yeah. uh, it's left wing yeah. propaganda. Right, right, right. They do apologetics for the left. They cover. They don't report stories that people need to know about if it doesn't help their side. And of course, they 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 push falsehoods. And then with their their allies and big tech, they, they silence people from speaking the truth. And with their ultimate goal of enslaving people. Yeah. And so Chuck Todd's like, you know, you, you support and Chuck Chuck Todd supports the general general mutilation, elective surgery to take uh, to castrate a little boy. Six, seven year old boy, let's let's castrate a, a elective surgery to, to castrate children. And do double mastectomies on little girls. So he's attacking Chuck Todd. This is a heinous position. It's evil. It's wicked. Army children. And yet he was attacking Revik Swamasawi for being opposed to that. Well, if a doctor says to do this, what kind of doctor would do something? That, that, that doctor should have his medical license taken away. He should be imprisoned. Jesus said, if you harm a little child, it'd be better if a big millstone be tied right. around your neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. Yeah. We're morally obligated to speak God's truth. Yeah. And to hold people accountable. I was thinking, uh, you know, what happens is we project weakness. Here's another. Here's <laughs> That's not the way of Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't a weakling. Yeah, I know. He wasn't a coward. No, he wasn't. He wasn't someone who appeased the no. forces of evil no. and allowed evil to reign against the good without no. saying a word. You're right. So uh, they have a, uh, you know, and all these schools are trying to show. show it's, it's crazy how the, how the the leftists, the Democrat Party, what they're doing now. 
They're trying to show pornographic material with children in kindergarten. Right. <laughs> it's like, how did we get here? Right, right. So, you know, and, and as Christians, oh, let's just be nice about it. You know, oh, let's not say anything. Muslim, Muslim parents are saying, you're not going to expose our children to this obscenity. We're not going to have it. Never. Just recently, they flew the, the gay and transgender oh, flag God. over the Capitol. Oh, it's illegal. I know. Our flag, you know, our flag's supposed to be in the center. It's the United States of America. This is old right. glory. Right. But they put the homosexual political symbol oh, in the middle. Of course, before that, remember Barack Hussein Obama painted the White House with lights. Yeah. He painted the White House the, the, with the gay flag. The color, you know, look at the White House, it's painted the rainbow flag, representing the, you know, that that people said this shows this this ideology, this political system has defeated. That's what you do when you defeat a country, yeah. is you go to his capital and you fly your flag showing you defeated them. Right? Right. So uh, you got a lot of Middle Eastern people, Arab Christians and majority Muslims in certain places in Detroit. Right. And uh, the city council said, you know, we're not gonna, over our state house, over our capital, we're not gonna fly a political symbol. We're only gonna fly the American flag the state flag, the city flag, we're not going to have any other flags being flown over our capital. So they did that. Because they have, you know what, what it is? They have the courage of their convictions. And nowadays, most Christians don't. What conviction do you mean? Convictions. They believe, they have intestinal fortitude. Right. They believe... There's a lot of things that I disagree with with Islam. Exactly. I don't like the way women are treated in Muslim countries, in Muslim society, honestly. I think it's oppressive. Exactly. But they believe in what we call traditional family values. Exactly. And they want to instill their moral code as is their right as parents to raise their children with this moral system. Exactly. But what do we do as Christians? Right. We send our kids to public school when they're indoctrinated in leftism. Yeah. Not, not just that, but with, with depravity. Yeah. Depravity. Yeah. Poisoning their morals. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so bizarre. The, the drag queen st a story hour and all this stuff. It's not a place for it. Yeah. Okay, you can have a drag queen go in there. Can a pastor come in and read a Bible story book? Uh, here's an example how, how how crazy the Democrats are. You know, they support drag queen st story hour and all these libraries in the public schools. Kirk Cameron wrote a book. I don't even think it was an overtly religious book. It was just based on Christian principles. And he wanted to come to the, the libraries and read his children's book. Yeah. Clean, wholesome, traditional values. Yeah. They wouldn't have them. Yeah. They censored him. They protest him. Yeah. So they don't believe in, they do believe in censorship. They don't believe in free speech. They don't believe in an open society, really. Yeah. We need to have the courage Let's listen to somebody who's talking about certain virtues, right? right, right, right. <laughs> you know, um, honesty and, you know. Uh, yes. But if you don't have courage, the entire moral system structure falls apart. So, Jesus, I, I think what, what people like to do is like, <laughs> who were the scribes and Pharisees? They were the ruling elites, right? Okay. Jesus called sinners to repentance. That's true. But he didn't condone sin. He preached Righteousness. He preached holiness. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We all make mistakes. I know I have. I have lots of mistakes. But God's moral structure doesn't change. We have to conform ourselves to His moral structure. So here's another thing about 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 the Muslims. It's like a, people saying like. You know, actually, when David Wood started challenging the Quran and confronting Muslims with these issues, yeah. instead of affirming their false beliefs, challenging them, showing the errors of their belief, and challenging them to accept the truth, yeah. Yeah. millions around the world at David Wood's ministry are coming to salvation. Yeah. Islam teaches that God's not our yeah, father. Yeah. Islam teaches that Jesus did not die on the cross. Right. He did die on the cross. Uh, he did die. I mean, historical. That's, that's, the, that's the absurd thing about it. You don't have to believe in the Bible. It's just yeah. a, 
You should. You need to believe in the Bible. But I'm saying that historians who aren't religious and aren't, aren't they, they say, well, it's a historical fact that Jesus died on the cross. So you got to, I'm a prophet, you know, so God say, you know, person claiming to be a prophet, denying an established fact of history. But the closest thing from Jesus' day to, to Islam was the Pharisees, really. I mean, they had a lot of the same beliefs, a lot of the same rules and regulations. In fact, if you look at the Quran with the, the amount of Midrash, what is Midrash? Jewish, uh, Jewish legendary expansions on the Bible story. Comes from the Pharisees. So, a lot, I mean, the Talmud influenced the Quran, the, the Midrash. So, you could argue that Islam is an offshoot of Pharisee, the, the Pharisee school of, of uh, Judaism. Huge influence on Islam. A lot of their their practices are derived from the Pharisees. Right. How did Jesus talk to, about the Pharisees? Let's look at this. Chapter 23 the Gospel of, uh, of Matthew. Right. The scribes and the Pharisees sitting in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not after their works, they say one thing and do the other. Right. They bind grievous burdens, right. <laughs> heavy burdens, grievous to be borne, and they lay them on other man's shoulders, but they will themselves will not move one finger to lift them. All their works they do to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and large their borders of their garments. They love the uppermost, the utter, uttermost, uh, uppermost rooms and the feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, the greetings, the marketplace. They love to be called the men, Rabbi, Rabbi. So then Jesus, verse 13, says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, but you're not going in yourselves, neither allow those who are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. If you devour widows' homes, and for a pretense you make a long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater not damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you can pass the sea and land to make one convert, one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him a twofold more child of hell than you yourselves. Woe unto you, blind guides, which say, whoever shall swear by the temple is nothing. Whoever shall swear by the gold of the temple is, he is a debtor, fools and blind. What is greater, the gold? Is gold holy in itself or actually the temple which sanctifies the gold? Jesus says, don't swear at all. So here we have these evil people for exploiting the masses, and Jesus rebuked it, right? right. And uh, we have our evil people in our society and culture and politicians exploiting, I mean, destroying our nation. We have an engineered decline, and uh, we're, we need to stand up. Right. I, I mentioned this before, I'm gonna say it again, it's interesting, you know? People don't put a high value on courage. Right. And, you know, they're trying to they tear all these statues because, you know, all these, you know, heroic people, people that changed the world, like uh, George Washington, yeah. Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, Christopher Columbus. Right. They're ripping all their statues down. Of course, they're leaving up Karl Marx, you know, whose ideology has led to the deaths of hundreds yeah. of millions of people. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we need men of courage and integrity yeah. to inspire yeah. us to be better. Yeah. That's what people, people looking around, looking around for leadership, and we don't, we don't have it. But um, the book of Revelation talks about those people who are being thrown into the depths of hell, into the lake of fire. And it mentions cowards. Cowards. So many people want to, to, to follow a crowd into evil. Jesus warned about that. Bride, broad is the way. Wide is the path that leads to destruction. Many people take that path. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And few people take it. You need to walk the narrow way, yeah. the way of the Lord. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And as, uh, you know, Peter Peter went and he, he, they arrested the apostles. They brought him before the uh, the high priest. And yeah. they, wanted to, they, they killed Jesus. They wanted to kill Peter and John and the yeah. apostles. Yeah. And you know, they, they beat them and, yeah. and imprisoned them and, and threatened them. They were afraid to actually, because of the consequences in the crowds, they were afraid to kill them how did how did they respond to that peter says there's no other name given up under heaven among men whereby we must be saved we command you not to speak in the name of jesus anymore we're the civil authority we're the sanhedrin it's the congress basically and we command you or, or the senate we command you not to preach the name of jesus christ by law peter says well i mean it's better to obey God than man. Yeah. We're obligated right. to speak the word of truth. I think we're obligated to be courageous. Yeah. 
and take a stand against the evil. Right. You know, it, it, it seems like you know, our country is being torn apart. Maybe we're on the verge of civil war. I hope not. I don't want to see violence. Mm -hmm. But you know, <laughs> if people would just speak up and stand up for yeah. what's right yeah. and have courage yeah. and fortitude, yeah. we can prevail yeah. without yeah. violence. Right. Like I said, I hope it doesn't come to that. And these people are willing, you know, we saw the, the riots with BLM and Antifa. They're willing to engage in violence. And the sad thing is we're not willing to peacefully stand up and yeah. speak the truth. Speaking of, uh, uh, I mentioned this recently, I want to mention it again. Matt Walsh was talking about, there's this, I think it's the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. And this man says, I mean, they're going, you go to, to Target, and the first thing you see is just uh, perversity, wickedness, sexualizing children. It's appalling. And uh, this, uh, this, this baseball player, he says, you know, let's not, let's not shop at, uh, at Target. You, know, yeah. you get other choices. If they're going to exploit yeah. children like that, they're going to push this anti-family, anti-Christian, anti-moral, wicked agenda. You need to do our shopping elsewhere. And uh, he was called, I mean, this is Canada. Canada is a very far-left country. <laughs> and uh, he was forced to apologize. Yeah. And Matt Walsh says, you can't apologize. He didn't do anything wrong. He's compromised his belief. He's a coward. He should not apologize. He goes, you know, what about his career? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Sometimes we have to put things above our career. Yeah. Jesus says, you know, people who spoke evil about me, they're going to speak evil about you. Yeah. So the issue is, um, Matt Walsh says, it's not going to save you from getting fired in the yeah. end. Yeah. They're going to fire you anyway. You might as well just... Still hold fast to your principles. Don't compromise your moral integrity. Yeah. He did it. Of course, two weeks later, just like Matt Walsh prophesied, yeah. he was fired. You know, what's going to happen to Canada? What's happening to California right now? Liberal, too many liberals. The state's collapsing. Yeah. You know, it's like they used to say, what, where, where goes California soon? There goes the rest of the country. It's collapsing. Because yeah. wherever you have far left leftist politics... Um, you have so, social and societal collapse. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's always going to happen. Yeah. It's it's really a horrible thing to see what's happening. God, uh, God help us. We need to to turn around. We need national revival and a spiritual awakening to save us from uh, that destruction. And uh, we have to affirm God's promises. Scripture says, you know, if, yeah. if my people, which are called my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. And I'll hear from heaven. Yeah. I'll forgive their sins. And I'll, yeah. I'll heal the land. Yeah. It is all about love. Yeah. Right. And you look at these homeless people. I feel sorry for them. Yeah. But sometimes we need tough love, love in the end. Well, for the betterment of these boy. people, yeah. but also for the betterment of society. So let's uh, yeah. let's bow our heads for a Abba Father, we thank you for the Son of Man, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, who came to the world and spoke his truth to us so that we can have salvation, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. Help us, Lord, to be courageous and speak your words of truth before a lost and dying world. We know, Lord, that you are you can revive this world and bring life, peace, prosperity, and salvation. We pray these things in the name of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah.